Welcome back to the Sports Match Zone. We continue now with football. Schoolboy football action got underway on Saturday in both Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago in the Twin Island Republic in the Secondary Schools Football League. Uh, we saw the opening game, the Super Cup, St. Benedict's, Benedict's College beating Fatima College, Fatima College 4-3 in a seven-goal thriller at the Hastley Crawford Stadium. Despite losing key players, the SSFL Premier Division champions were dominant in the first half, going to the break with a 3-0 lead. Fatima made a contest of it in the second half, getting two quick goals before Daryl Zoom Zoom Garcia squashed any hopes of a comeback by completing his hat-trick. So in the three successive finals contested between St. Benedict's and Fatima, it reads St. Benedict's two wins, the Premier title and the Super Cup. Fatima won the Intercol national title so a great start there in tnt and st benedict's uh, coming up with a, a a good victory and keeping their dominance over fatima at least in this period on 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 track yeah for sure um clearly these two teams showing themselves as the best at the schoolboy level in trinidad and tobago and really good comeback by fatima college as well because at three nil down at half time and you're thinking this one is very much done um, but they came out with so much more purpose in the second half. They got those two quick goals, but Garcia was quite clinical for St. Benedict's and got the job done. It was a, a, a wonderful performance um, by St. Benedict's. And I must say, Lance, it looked really good on television as well. I was watching this game while I was on my way to the National Stadium to um, watch the Manning and the Costa Cup openers, and it looked quite good on the Sportsmax app and a really good performance performance from St. Benedict's to start the season. Yeah, and um, the St. Benedict's coach, very, very, very confident. And he said post-game that <laughs> this game is already behind them and they're looking forward to the season with a lot of gusto. So um, it, is, it is very clear that they've, they've considered this just a good opening match for them, but immaterial because what they want is to pull in the entire trophies for the 20. 23 season. Yeah, I think they would have been a little disappointed last season not to lift the Intercol title uh, after winning the Premier Division title and I think they want to set that record straight and they will think to themselves this is a brilliant way to start that campaign. We've beaten Fatima College who we expect to be um, one of the, the main forces um, in the competitions this campaign and I think that will give them tremendous confidence and belief going forward that they can snatch the Intercol mm -hmm. SSFL Premier Division double. Yeah, and there was some feeling, you know, Ricardo, that since the return of the SSFL after COVID, the, the, the teams were a little behind schedule. Yes. And, and, and their, their, the quality of the competition and the games themselves would have been affected by teams who were not fully back yet in proper background training and tactical work and so on. And I think we're seeing the signs here now that based on what we saw in Saturday's opening games, that, that the teams are, have put COVID-19 setbacks behind them and are ready now to bring the level of football that we had seen prior to 2020. Yeah, everything I saw on Saturday suggests to me that we're going to see greater quality all round in SSFL football this season. And uh, you are right, Lance. I mean, just after COVID, um, I think when you looked at the competition, it, 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 it didn't look as appealing as you would want it to be. And especially when you are thinking about development and the, the next generation of quality Trinidad and Tobago players, you couldn't necessarily see it. But much better quality football on display on Saturday. The quality of the passing, the movement of the ball, I thought was uh, significantly better. Even from these two teams who were champion teams last year, yes. they looked, in my opinion, much better than they did a year ago. And I think the coaches um, can take a lot of credit for that. Yeah, St. Benedict's coach Randolph Boyce. And um, as I said, he spoke glowingly about his team's performance um, on Saturday and uh, really wanted to emphasize the fact that um, the season ahead for them is where they are banking on putting in some really, really good performances. Well, action in the SSFL will continue on Wednesday with the first round of the Premier Division. And the matches will be Malik Secondary against QRC at Serpentine Road. Uh, the Pleasantville game, St. Mary's College is on as well, along with Fatima College against St. Anthony's College. 
Arima North against Presentation, San Juan North against St. Benedict's, Space Side High will be up against Bishops High, Naparima College will be up against Chaguanas North at San Luis Street, and Trinity East will take on East Mukurapu, and that will be at Trin City. Round one matches Wednesday in the Premier Division fixtures. Still with schoolboy football, but now to Jamaica, where the rural area Da Costa Cup and urban area Manning Cup competitions kicked off at the National Stadium in Kingston on Saturday. In the first match of the day, reigning Da Costa Cup champions, Clarendon College, made light work of Lennon High, running out comfortable 5-0 winners. Malachi Douglas, who represents Don Beholden in the Jamaica Premier League, grabbed a double. As Clarendon College scored all five goals in a dominant first half performance. Meanwhile, reigning champions in the Manning Cup, Jamaica College, were two new winners over Tivoli Gardens, Thierry Garrick in the first half stoppage time, and Javon Mills in the 80th minute were the goal scorers for the Devon Ferguson coach, Jamaica College. And it could have been more had it not been for the brilliance of the Tivoli Gardens goalkeeper, Shakur Adair. Ricardo, you were on commentary duties on Saturday. What did you take away from Jamaica College's win? I think a lot of what you expect with Jamaica College, especially in recent seasons, one of the um, stats that I spoke about at the beginning of that match is that going into that match, Jamaica College had drawn three of their last five opening games. And even last season, when they beat a hapless um, St. Mary's College by 13 goals to nil in their opener, they followed that up with a nil or draw. So usually, if Jamaica College is vulnerable, it will be at the beginning of the season, and we've seen that over time. I think coming into Saturday's match, though, they knew that Tivoli Gardens posed a serious threat. Um, everything coming out of preseason is that the Tivoli team has been looking really good and they are much improved from last year. And remember that in 2022, they won the Walker Cup knockout title, so they would have had that confidence as well. They had five players who started in the Walker Cup final of 2022, starting in this opening game against Jamaica College. So I think JC came out with a little bit more purpose than maybe they would have a little bit more desire and they got the job done and and having said that Lance they still in my opinion did not show everything that they have um, on Saturday um, Javon Mills well this is uh, Tierra Garrick there number 11 who got the opening goal um, Odin Wilberforce, who they have gotten from your Casa High School, he wasn't even on the team sheet. He's a quality player. He scored 16 goals in rural area football last season, including 13 in the Da Costa Cup, three in the Ben Francis knockout. He's now at Jamaica College, and he will add a lot to their attack for sure, an already potent attack that Davian Ferguson has to work with. And they also have Javon, Javon Mills um, from your Castle as well, who has some Premier League experience. He scored the second goal. He is back. He adds so much experience, so much quality. And right away, we are seeing a Jamaica College team, Lance, that I think throughout the course of the season will build mm -hmm. and will continue to get better, which is the way they operate usually anyhow. Yeah, and part of Jamaica College's potency in schoolboy football for the better part of a decade now would have been their depth which you referenced just now in talking about the fact that they haven't laid all their cards on the table yet. And it's one of the reasons why Jamaica College has been so dominant in schoolboy football in Jamaica. The fact that they have so much depth and they have players who um, are, are going to be unfurled later on in the tournament, which a lot of the fans wouldn't have seen in the early stages. Yeah, very much the case. Or players who will be released... Um, when it is not a TV match, <laughs> um, you could look at it that way as well. But yes, they do have great depth, Jamaica College. Part of the reason for that is because they have um, an A-class um, recruitment program, if you want to put it like that. There is no doubt that the Jamaica College setup searches for talent and they look around the country and they look for the very best players that they can integrate into their setup with what they already you, you, have. You, you say around the country, but outside of Jamaica as well. Well, also outside of Jamaica, <laughs> because yes, they do have players from 
um, the rest of the Caribbean in their setup. We saw a number of them play last season. I think they have about six or seven of them in their squad this season from outside of Jamaica. So they have a fabulous recruiting machinery and put that together with a very good management structure and a, and a good structure overall, in my opinion. It means that they are always going to be challengers because they have a system in place that ensures they replenish as far as the talent is concerned and quality talent as well. So there is no doubt that when um, the business end of the season comes, Jamaica College will very much be there once again. For Davian Ferguson this year though, I suspect Lance, he started in 2019 replacing Andrew Peer who had gone um, titleless in 2018 after Miguel Coley had left. Um, he's won two Manning Cup titles, Davian Ferguson. He's won a Champions Cup title as well, but he's not won the Olivia Shield. And I think that will likely um, be among the things that he desperately wants this campaign. Lost the Olivia Shield mm -hmm. last season to Clarendon College. I think when they got to the final as well in 2019, it was Clarendon College. When they won the Manning Cup in 2019, mm -hmm. it was Clarendon College who beat them in the Olivia Shield. And Clarendon College looked brilliant on Saturday to, to start their campaign. So you can bet that come the business end of the, the Costa Cup, Clarendon College will very much be there as well. Yeah, and, and the fact is about Clarendon College, now you go there they scored five goals on all in the first half yes and uh, displaying the the typical Lenny Hyde kind of football they play very attractive football and the ball handling skills of the players immensely um, impressive and um, a team that you know you just love to watch and that's just uh, stereotypical of Clarendon College teams yeah, very much the case. Was especially impressed with this goal, the third goal. Um, just beautifully worked, as Donald pointed out, clearly off the training ground. Um, this is something that they must have practiced over and over again. You just look at the movement, um, the players knowing exactly where they were going to pass the ball. And Lennon just uh, shell-shocked, um, surprisingly. And you can see Lenny Hyde smiling there because he knows, yes. yeah, we really worked on that one. Um, but from a Lennon standpoint, very disappointed with Lennon. In the heat of Kingston Lance, they took forever to warm up. And some would even suggest that maybe it was because it was all a five um, that uh, Clarendon College um, did not push as hard as they could have in the second half. But yeah, this CC team looks good. I was surprised to see the number of returning players to this Clarendon College team because I thought a few of them might have moved on, like a Malachi Douglas who yes. scored a couple of goals. Christopher Hall, who I think is a real quality player. Um, but the fact that they are there, Kahim Dixon, is still up front. Remember him? He scored that stunning bicycle kick goal in the Champions Cup semi-final against Kingston College. Of course, that game belonged to Dijon Whisper Richards um, with the goal of the season. But yeah, this CC team looks good. And once again, it has the stamp of Lenworth Hyde playing attractive football, yeah. playing quality football. In my opinion, Lance, over the last three or four seasons, Clarendon College has played the best brand of football in the country. Yes. Um, they are a delight to watch and it was the case again on Saturday and I can't wait to see them again. And unlike Jamaica College, mm -hmm. um, where you find that you have to watch Jamaica College over a number of games to see a lot of what they have, mm -hmm. with Clarendon College, what you see is what you get. Yes. Lenny Hyde is more yeah. often than not going to put his best available side out there and you just watch and you enjoy yeah. and genuinely Clarendon yeah. College is, is a delight to watch. Yeah, you said best football in the country. You're not talking schoolboy football only, are you? No, I'm not. So you're saying that Clarendon College best plays brand of best football. brand of football yes. even above the Jamaica Premier League? Yes. Okay. I don't, I don't think I see any team in the Jamaica Premier League that consistently plays that brand of football. Montego Bay United, Arnett Gardens, mm. in the past, yes. um, played um, that type of expressive attacking mm. f football with flair. Yes. Um, that's what you get game in, game out from Clarendon College. Yeah. I can't say I see that in the Jamaica Premier League game in, game out. Maybe yeah. you could reference Cavalier at one stage, but even last season, they were not as expressive as they have been in the past. So, mm. yeah.
But I guess confidence and dominance would yeah. contribute to what you've just said. Anyhow, yes. Lenny Hyde takes over as the Don Beholden coach this season in the Jamaica <laughs> Premier League. And Don Beholden, they have a lot of high-quality players with good ball-handling skills. So let's see if Don Beholden can match Clarendon College we'll um, see. attractiveness on the football field. Other results on Saturday in uh, the ISA schoolboy football competition. We had the Jamaica College 2-0 over Tivoli, Clarendon 5-0 over Lennon. There was Froome 3-1 over Merlinati. Cambridge beaten 6-1 by Rossiz. And uh, the competition continuing this week with lots of matches. Coverage on Sportsmax channels, Sportsmax 1 and 2, um, will continue over the weekend. We go to break. Still a lot more to come on the Sportsmax Zone. Back in a moment.